Hello folks, today we're going to work on another creature that has tentacles. Sea anemones were actually named after the flowers, but they are not plants, they are actually invertebrate animals. They are made up of a tube that's attached to a surface with a mouth at the top and stinging poisonous tentacles that surround the mouth and push food into the anemone. And Although they have, they sound rather vicious, they're really quite beautiful. They tend to grow in clusters like this, at least the ones that I've seen in photos have been growing in clusters. I'll show you how to create them with a stalk, but I'll also show you how to make some without a stalk. They can have shorter wide stalks or really long thin stalks. Their tentacles can be shorter or longer, but I'm just we're just going to work on two versions and you can feel free to modify them however you like. So I'm going to start out with something called a strawberry anemone because why wouldn't I want to stitch something that looks so beautiful and bright? So strawberry anemones, as their name suggests, are bright red. I've got this really nice red cloth here with little white speckles on it. You could certainly use just a solid red cloth and then stitch some little straight stitches in white or light green to mimic the speckles. I've already finished one one of the strawberry anemones and I'm going to work on the second one. So basically what I did was I cut out a blob shape and these can be very slightly in size and shape. They don't have to be exactly the same. And I'm stitching it down just with some straight stitches that protrude right out into the area around the anemone. And I'm using a lighter contrasting color. If you look at these up, the, the body of them is bright red like this and the tentacles that go around the, the mouth opening there, they look to be very light, either white or a really, really pale color, a light color. So that's what I'm working with but I noticed a slight problem. So the background of my cloth is really dark and I've placed these anemones on a really light colored base fabric here that, that represents the ground. Now the problem is that the light, my light colored stitching will show up really well against the background, but not so well against the light colored white cloth that I have here. So I have a bit of a dilemma and the way that I decided to deal with that is to vary the colors, to use m multiple different colors of thread to stitch around the outside. And I also use multiple different stitches. I use the straight stitches that I mentioned. Now I've gone on to another blob here and I'm doing using straight stitches again in this part, but I also used a sideways fly stitch. So these tentacles are not stiff and straight. They're loose and flowing. So I wanted to create that sort of appearance. So some of the some of the stitches, instead of doing a straight stitch, I did a shallow fly stitch, which pulled that straight stitch to curve it a little bit and sometimes instead of just doing a fly stitch right away I did something similar to what we did with the couching in the last video. So I took that long straight stitch and then I just pulled it slightly with a small securing stitch and somewhere in the middle and some I did near the top some near the bottom so it gave the appearance that those stitches are not straight. Well they're not straight after you curve them like that and on some of them, I also did something called a pistol stitch. Now, a pistol stitch is like a French knot at the end of a straight stitch. So the way you do that is you come out of your fabric, you wrap the thread around your needle, just as you would if you were doing a French knot. But then instead of going back into the same hole or close to the same hole where you came out so that you just have a knot, you put this, you put your needle back into the cloth a, a little ways away so there so then you have a knot on the end of a stick and then you can also adjust that by slightly curving it with a with a securing stitch now i did look up the strawberry anemones and i found something interesting apparently there are different varieties of creatures that are called strawberry anemones in the uk they have something that's called a strawberry anemone and then in north america they have something else a different a different type of anemone that's called a strawberry anemone and apparently they're different but look a lot alike 
So if you wanted to take a look, you can look up the different varieties if you like. And now I'm, I'm bouncing around, so I did this a lot. I bounced around between the various pieces by and changing my thread color as I went so that they had a variety of mainly pale, light color threads, but varying the colors from pink to green to white so that the colors that I was using would show up against both the dark and the light backgrounds. I'm leaving the center part off the off the strawberry anemone open so you can see the bright red in the middle around the stitches that I'm using to create the tentacles and I'm just keep going around and around and here you can see really quite well I think how I how I used the fly stitch to to create a curved line instead of a straight line well as long as I'm in frame because that, <laughs> that turned out to be a theme on this video as well because I filmed this video on the same day that I was working on the on the jellyfish so yeah I guess it's not surprised so I'll, I, I haven't filmed the other two videos for this month yet so I will try to keep an eye on that and keep things in frame a little bit better for the next two videos but Basically, these look really great in a cluster, and these strawberry these strawberry anemones have shorter stalks, so you can't actually see them. They're they're sitting quite close to the ground, and I learned about these from a fiber artist that I follow on Instagram, and her name's Bettina Matskun. She's actually local. She lives in Vancouver, and she had posted some strawberry anemones that she had that she had been stitching and and that's where I learned about them. The only place that I could find pictures of her strawberry anemones is is on her Instagram feed but if you look her up and I'll give you the spelling of her name if you look up her Instagram feed and you scroll down a little ways you'll not only find pictures of her stitched anemones you'll also find some photos that she took of anemones in the Vancouver Aquarium the place that I didn't go visit to take photos even though I thought about it you can take a look at her, some a few of her photos there if you look up her Instagram feed and then there's another local textile artist named Kirsten Cherzenoff who also has some photos of anemones and other sea ocean dwelling sea life that she's done using embroidery and both of these artists are worth looking up now Kirsten I could not find a website or anything now the place that I found her work is on Pinterest so if you look up her name and I will in the notes here leave the spelling of Kirsten's last name if you go to Pinterest and you search for her name and anemone you should and you scroll down you should be able to find some beautiful examples of stitched anemones and other ocean dwelling creatures and there you go there's a little cluster of strawberry anemones and now let's work on some anemones with stalks where you can see the raised stalks right now I'm going to work on these sort of squat little little anemones and where you can see the stalk and one of them angles off to the side and the other one goes pretty much straight up and down so I've cut the pieces of cloth and you'll notice if you watch the the video about the jellyfish this is the same cloth that I use for the jellyfish because why not you can use this same cloth in many different ways and I'm using a straight stitch in a light color to secure that that stock down onto onto my base fabric but what, it, what I'm doing here is I'm doing the straight little straight stitches seed stitches if you will all over the surface of the stock but I'm making I'm I'm taking care to also stitch over the 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 side edges to secure them down and the other thing you'll notice is that this stock 
goes right to the bottom of my cloth, giving the appearance that you can't see where it attaches to the ground. It continues on beyond the, the base off my cloth. But I could have, if I had sort of a little hillock or a ground area, I could have it raised up a little bit and then it would appear to be attached to that hill or whatever it is. I started out with a very long, a long piece of thread and you can see how I'm struggling and I thought I, I can handle it, it'll be fine, but no, it got into a big tangled mess so I had to eventually cut it down and cut out the knot that formed. I wasn't able to rescue it, but I did but, but I did end up with two shorter lengths, which was probably a bit easier to manage. Now, above the stock, I've got that little oval, oval shape that represents the mouth. And that, that kind of is the equivalent of the other piece that we worked with, that, that bright red piece. So I, I've done it as, a, as an oval here. So you could do it as a circle or an oval or just any regular blob shape. And then I'm going to create the tentacles pretty much the same way that I did for the strawberry jelly or the strawberry anemones by mixing up the types of stitches that I'm using to go around to create the tentacles. So I've started out here with some pistol stitches, the French knot on the end of a straight stitch, but then I'll also mix things up and just do some straightforward straight stitches as well as some curved deflected straight stitches. And I'll just bounce around using a few different colors of thread for the tentacles and this time I'm just I'm just using bright colors of thread because I'm not going for realism here I don't know I these are not any particular named anemones they're just out of my imagination so they're they're creatures that live on stalks with brightly colored tentacles around their mouth and there's that little cluster of fish up there, the little fish that are desperately trying to avoid being sucked into an anemone's mouth there. So there's a little story going on there. So I'll just keep doing this. And if you noticed that one off my, one of these anemones I had quite straight and the other one I had angled. And you can, you can have them like that. You can have them all straight up and down. You'll see the finished ones at the end once I finish st stitching them all down. I didn't manage to get the whole thing on camera, but you'll see, I ho hopefully again, you'll see enough to give you an idea of how to stitch these down. I'm not really going for realism. I'm just being inspired by th these little creatures. If you look up Kirsten Cherzenoff's pieces you'll see that she she often does straight lines rows of running stitch vertically or horizontally or other stitches to, on the on the stalks off the anemones that she creates so I you don't have to do exactly what I've done if you ha can find inspiration elsewhere or decide for yourself what kind of stitching you would like to do And now that first one's finished, so now I, I can add another one beside it. 
and this one's going to be angling slightly away because they don't all have to be lined up in in a very straight row if you don't want to. I think I'll do that off camera, but let me show you these other stalks that I had added earlier. And now I can cut out a little round blobby shape and stitch that onto the top and add some tentacles to that. Here's a view of some of my, my finished anemones. And you can see that I've got the short stubby ones. I've got these taller blue ones with the blue stalks with green tentacles up there at the top. And then there are the pink ones that I showed you as well. Now, one of the things that I did is, you might notice that they've, they've got some markings around the outside edge that I did with pen. So I did that with a Sharpie. I didn't think that the pieces of cloth were really showing up very well. So I went in with a Sharpie and I created some shadows around the edges off my off my anemones, which I think give them give them some better dimension and help some of the stitching to show up a little bit better. This works best with a older, slightly dried up Sharpie rather than with a nice juicy brand new one. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And as always, happy stitching. I'll see you again soon.